Zaya Ragnarsson, outcast by his people for denying the gods, disinherited and denounced by his legendary father, Ragnar Lofbrok. That is where we begin our journey, in a little place in Norway called Viking. Welcome to my Crusader Kings free playthrough, where we take a young Jarl named Zaya as far as he can go. Now, if you've seen my previous video, you would have seen how we set up this game. And I've actually decided to go with our own religion called True Vikings. Now, he is the son of the famous Ragnar Lofbrook, which adds a lot of pressure because obviously that's a lot to live up to. Now, I'm going to go with a Skullduggery focus purely for that plus three intrigue. And then we need to look at our actual court, what we actually have in. And unfortunately, our court don't seem too strong. So we might actually have to get a few people in. I mean, if you look at our Chancellor, He's got four. He's got a stat of four, so that's um that's never going to be helpful. So we're, we're going to have to replace him. We need to get a steward. We need to get a marshal, and we need to get a spy master. Now, if we look what's available, we have this guy, which is 17, and then the next is three. Now, the first thing I like to look at is I like to look at if the person's going to actually make a good knight or not, because if they're going to make a good knight, I don't normally like to put them into my council because then they could get killed, and we don't want that happening. But this guy has only got seven prowess. So I'm actually going to put him in. And then the next is Steward. And we have this guy here, which is 17, which is actually quite good. So he's actually going to make a good night. So I don't really want to put him in for the time being. I want to hopefully we can get someone better. And then we take a look at our Marshal and we have this guy. And he's, wow, his stats are incredible for a night. I mean, prowess of 34. This guy is incredibly strong. So he's, uh, he's certainly going to be our best knight. He's going to be the one leading the armies, you know, obviously apart from myself. Um, I actually will make him a marshal, I think, because he's actually got a really good marshal stat. And I actually want him to be running the whole law troop, you know, kind of side of things. And then the most important is let's look for a spy master. Now, we actually do have a half decent spy master. It's a shame that she has Midas touched and not um, this one, which is Elusive Shadow, because Elusive Shadow, it gives you the extra eight in Intrigue. Um, so that would have been really useful if they could have swapped over but so now we just need to find ourselves a steward and of course how we can do that is we can look at the women in our court so we have one two three women i mean which isn't great but we could maybe recruit this lady and get her married off but hopefully a good steward okay now let's find a spouse for her i mean this guy's okay but he does have no uh, special perks that will help him and he does have generous, which is probably not a good thing for a steward. And obviously the other thing we can look at, we can look at people's prowess and we can see if we can actually get any decent knights. Like this guy, this guy has 28 prowess, which is really good. He has some really good perks for a knight. So I'm actually going to marry her to him because he will make a really good knight. Now, one thing we do have to start thinking about is we have to start thinking about offspring for ourselves. So I think the best bet is going to be to hook up with one of these two girls that we have left. Now we have this woman who doesn't really offer much in respect of taking her as a partner. And then we have Inga, who actually has the comedy trait, which is actually really helpful because it's congenital. So our kids could end up with that. So I think she's going to be the one that we take as a concubine. And then hopefully she can pop out lots of babies. Now with the remaining girl, I'm going to go for one of those stewards because we really have no choice because I don't think it's going to be a good move to put one of our knights in there, especially that we have one of our knights uh, as our marshal. So if, you know, if they both end up dying, we end up losing two court members and then we have to go through this process again. But obviously it will be a lot harder. So I'm actually going to get Copti because he's actually got um, Fortune build Builder, which obviously, as you can see, really helps him uh, if he becomes a steward. So I think he's going to be our guy. We're going to marry them two off and we're going to get him into the court. And then the next thing I want to do is I actually want to see our control. And as you can see, in these two counties, our control is actually quite good. But in this one, it could use a bit of improvement. So we're actually going to try and improve the control in this place here. Because we don't really want any issues early on um, with our people being unhappy. So I think if we get that out of the way early, then we can start on training knights, stuff like that, and actually building an army to hopefully take some more land. Now, speaking of that, we do have 826 troops, so we actually have a half decent army. Now, obviously, we're not going to have a you know, big enough army to take over a place like Upland, but we can actually start looking at a few of these smaller places, like this place. Now, the first thing I like to look at is if they have a liege or not, because, and alliances, but they do only have 639 troops. 
and no alliances. So this could be a really good place to try and take. Now, sometimes if you leave that too long, somebody else will attack them or they will form alliances and then it becomes harder. So we're going to want to try and do that as quick as we can, but not too quickly because we have to get our realm in order first. So I'm going to unpause the game and I'm going to let those marriages happen so we can get those in. Now, this guy's opinion of us is really low, but that's probably because he's a different religion. So the first thing we're going to try and do with him is we're going to try and convert him to our religion. And then that should improve his opinion. And we're also going to do the same thing with this guy. Now we have two physicians that have been suggested to us. Uh, we have this guy and uh, not looking too promising. And we have this guy. Again, just not good enough. This guy would actually make a good knight. So I'm actually going to try and invite him to the court. He won't join, unfortunately. But um, I think... I mean, neither of these are actually that great. I mean, this guy's got learning on his side, which is good. But I guess we're just going to have to take this guy for now and then hopefully get someone better in the long term. But it's a shame we can't get this guy, as like I say, he would make a good knight. But it's all good. We do have the option of increasing development in our county, but I don't think now is the right time to do it. But we're going to want to try and build these up slowly, but obviously making sure we don't take too much of our money. Because the cost, I mean, look, the cost is crazy. Like we have 500 prestige and it's going to take 200 prestige. And it doesn't help that they take so long to build. But we will come back to that. Now, the next thing we're going to want to try and do is we're going to want to try and infiltrate uh, different places because we can use our intrigue to our advantage. So if we go up to this place here, this guy has a lot of troops, so it might be worth actually getting a hook on him uh, in case we come into any altercations with him. So we're going to start that. And then I think purely for the fun factor, we're going to go to Upland and we're going to look at this woman here. Now we're going to try and seduce her because she does have the intelligence trait and hopefully we can get a secret child out of her because why not? Let's call some havoc. I mean, we are obviously running the risk of beyond finding out and uh, not being too happy with us and then coming to absolutely destroy us. But that is a risk I'm willing to take. And now we have a few things in the works. I think it is time to start a war with this guy. So we're going to try and conquer his county. Now this will cost us 75 prestige, but that is all good. And we want to make it so our troops spawn here. And then we want to call our troops. Might help if I pause the game. So hopefully we fare okay and uh, one thing I did forget to do that I want to quickly do now is I just want to check our knights. We have like four de three decent knights so we should be all good. It's actually quite close but we should be good. We do get the victory. Now we just have to siege the castle but I'll speed it up. Now this is the high chiefess, Ileana. We're going to go for the 58% and hopefully it pays off. The trouble is I mean is it worth the 20 stress? Probably not, to be honest. So I think I'm going to go for this one and just cross our fingers and hope it works. And now he's actually coming back. Try and get rid of us. We should be good. He's only got one champion. We've got six. So we should be all good. And we are. Okay, she, she seemed happy. So that's good. That's a good start. We actually, she's got actually 67 opinion of us, so that will help. He keeps coming back. Okay, now if we look at her, she actually has really good intelligence. We're going to go for a chance to learn. Because she's intelligent, I think she would appreciate that. And she is, she's completely engrossed. That is going very well. Now we've almost sieged the castle. And we have it. So now we have a little bit more land, which will help us. Let our troops rebuild. And now the first thing we need to do is we need to start turning this place to our faith. We'll get our chaplain to work on that right away. And then obviously the other thing we have to work on is getting it under control. Now we have the fabrication hook. 
Now, I think we're going to have to go for this. I mean, it is a tyranny, but I think sometimes you just got to take that risk. I mean, it might make him hate us a little bit, but we do get a strong hook on him, and that could be really beneficial later down the line. That's where I'm going to leave this episode. If you did enjoy it, then please hit the like button. And if you have any tips, you know, or suggestions on how I can improve my realm, then feel free to leave them in the comments. You know, I read them all and respond to everyone. But thanks for watching. Have a good rest of your day. And until next time.